So we are multiplying the binomials back together. So in order to multiply two binomials, we use the FOIL method. So you're going to do first outer and inner as well as last. So we have to do first outer, inner, last. So when we do that, we get x squared plus 2x minus 2x minus 4. What you do is group your like terms together. So a positive 2x and a negative 2x cancel, leaving me with x squared minus 4. And then in part b, you have 16x squared minus 20x plus 20x minus 25. And you get 16x squared minus 25. So like I said today, we are looking at factoring quadratic expressions. We are looking at two special types. We are looking at a difference of squares and perfect square trinomials. A difference of squares is a binomial that consists of two perfect squares. So both answers we got in our warm-up are considered a difference of squares. Both answers we got in the warm-up are considered a difference of squares. There were two perfect squares subtracting as the operation between them. So a difference of squares only works if you are subtracting the two perfect squares. A sum of squares is not a formula. Sum of squares is not a formula. The order we write our difference of squares does not matter. So A minus B times quantity A plus B is the same as the quantity A plus B times the quantity A minus B. When you are factoring and we're using a difference of squares, we are looking for the following items. A difference of squares will only contain two terms. They must have a subtraction sign between them. And both terms must be perfect squares. Now, an exception or a nod to this is that the both, both terms must be perfect squares and this can occur after a GCF. So what I mean by that is you could have something like 32x squared minus 50. And what happens is 32 and 50 both divide by 2, so they have a GCF of 2, which means you could take out a GCF of 2, leaving 16x squared minus 25, and now I have two perfect squares being subtracted. So this is a case where you could have two perfect squares, but you don't immediately see that because we have a GCF. So that's why yesterday we talked about GCF before these special cases because that should always be the first thing we do when solving a factoring problem. The first thing we're always going to look for is a GCF. 
So here in example one, I have x squared minus 16. x squared is considered a perfect square because its two factors are x and x. And 16 is a perfect square because its two factors are 4 and 4. So x squared minus 16 is a difference of squares. It factors as the square root of the first and the square roots of the second with one of each. So you have x plus 4, x minus 4. Yesterday we talked about our magic x. If you were plugging this into a magic x, recall that the top of the magic x is a times c. So in standard form, you have ax squared plus bx plus c. So in this case, a times c would have been 1 times negative 16. And your b value is the middle term with x, so that would be 0. So you were looking for two numbers that multiplied to negative 16 and sum to 0, which are my two factors at the end positive and negative 4. So just starting to look at the connection between the magic x and our formulas. x squared is a perfect square, 49 is a perfect square, so it factors as x plus 7, x minus 7, or x minus 7, x plus 7. Four x squared minus one. Four is a perfect square. X squared is a perfect square. And one is a perfect square. So this factors as two x and two x, one and one, and again, a positive and a negative. Thirty-six and eighty-one are both perfect squares. So you have six x and six x minus nine plus nine. Now, what do you know about six and nine, or even so much as thirty-six and eighty-one? Go ahead, Isaac. Yeah, both of them are technically divisible by three. So you could also think of these as having a GCF. And what we could have done is factored out a 3 from each of those to start. So 36 divided by 3 would have given you 12. And 81 divided by 3 would have given you 27. But 27 and 12 both still divide by 3. So there's actually a larger GCF to 36 and 81. 36 and 81 has a larger GCF than 3. It is, I guess it's, what divides into 36 and 81? Nine. Yeah, 9. So you could have actually taken out a GCF of 9 so if you bring out a 9, you have 4x squared minus 9. And 4 and 9 are still both perfect squares. So you get 9 in front, 2x minus 3, 2x plus 3. And again, if you look at 9 and 6, they both divided by 3. And these both would have divided by 3. So you could see that GCF of 9. What that means is this answer here and this answer here are equivalent. But if it tells you to factor completely, you must take out your GCF of 9. If this were a delta math or an SAT question, this answer would be incorrect. 
that first answer, the 6x minus 9, 6x plus 9, would be incorrect. That is not factored completely. Okay? The second formula we have is a perfect square trinomial. A perfect square trinomial is a product you obtain when you have a sum of squares where they factor identically. This would be the case on our graph where we had a repeated root. So a perfect square trinomial formula comes from repeated roots when graphing. When factoring using the perfect square trinomial formulas, you are looking for three terms. The last term must always be positive. So if you look at the two cases, the last term in both cases are positive. What's different is the middle terms. If the middle term is positive, then both factors are positive. If the middle term is negative, both factors are negative. So the last term must be positive, as well as the first term and the last term must be perfect squares. So we have three conditions. First and last term are perfect squares. We have three terms, and the last term is positive. The middle term needs to follow this rule right here, where it's the square root of the first, the square root of the second, and multiplied by 2. So x squared is a perfect square. 16 is a perfect square. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of 16 is 4. Multiply that by 2. 2 times 4 is 8. So we see that the square root of the first, the square root of the second, times 2 gives 8x, which matches our middle term here. That means that this factors as the square root of the first. This is positive, so plus the square root of the last, which is 4, squared. And again, this would give, on my graph, a repeated root. If you think about this in terms of graphing a quadratic, this is a quadratic function shifted left four units. The a value is 1, the k value is 0, so it shifted four units to the left, so it looks like that. Remember that the factored form is one step away from solving. Okay, 4 is a perfect square. x squared is a perfect square. 9 is a perfect square. The square root of 4x squared is 2x. The square root of 9 is 3 times 2. So 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 3 gives 12x. So the middle term is the square root of the first times square root of the last times 2, which means this factors as 2x plus 3 squared. And again, it's a positive because it's a plus in front of the 12x. Okay, 25 is a perfect square, 81 is a perfect square, the square root of 25x squared is 5x, the square root of 81 is 9, multiplying that by 2, 5 times 9 times 2 gives 90x, so it meets our rule, so we have 5x plus 9 squared.
severely delayed. Okay. Hundred is a perfect square, so that's ten x. Eighty one is a perfect square, that's nine times two. So 10 times 9 times 2 is in fact 180x. So it's 10x plus 9 squared. Okay. And our last one, 64, perfect square, 1 is a perfect square times 2. 8 times 1 times 2 is 16. My middle term here is negative 14. So this is not a perfect square trinomial. If it's not a perfect square trinomial, you could look for a GCF. There is not a GCF of 1, so that does not help. So then you could go to the magic X. 64 times 1 is 64. And you would try to think of factors of 64 that sum to negative 14. So that would have been negative 8 and negative 8, because they both have to be negative. So that doesn't work. 64 divides by 4, so it would be negative 4 and negative 16. That doesn't work. 2 would be negative 2 and negative 32. That doesn't work. So what happens is there are no factors of 64 that sum to negative 14. So this is another special case that we call prime. Prime means that it is not factorable. So if you have a number on top and a number on bottom that does not work for my magic x, then it is not factorable or considered prime. Your homework is that next worksheet, front and back. Yes? 